Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we begin tonight with exact track 4D radar tracking rain moving through Metro Detroit, and it's going to stay soggy heading into the new year. And you see it on the radar there. We've been seeing rain on and off all day. We have, so let's get right over to Kim Adams in the forewarned forecast. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim and Pamela. Well, we do have rain out there right now, and it looks like it will continue for at least the next several hours, and it could be heavy at times. So it's tough to enjoy 50 degree weather when it's pouring down rain. Detroit 53, 49 in Howe, 51 in Pontiac, and also in Adrian. Exact track 40 radar. Most of the heavier rain is centered just to the north and west of downtown Detroit. It's dry and warm and Detroit, but raining in Livonia, Farmington Hills, Northville, and Plymouth, a little bit further to the west, and Milford, it's raining there, South Lyon, Green Oak, Heartland, and also in Brighton. We'll widen back out the view as we go through the next several hours. The rain will pick up. It'll be heavy at times, but temperatures will remain well above freezing, so we don't have to worry about any ice on the roadways, but there could be some ponding as you head out tonight. 54 now at City Airport, 53 at Metro, 51 in Pontiac. It's a little warmer than it was yesterday by about 9 degrees in Mount Clemens and 1 degree in uh, Detroit. Tomorrow we'll hit the low 40s. Rain should end by the morning. I'll have your complete forecast coming up. Okay, Kim, thank you. All right, less than 24 hours from now, the Michigan Wolverines will be on the field vying for a shot at the national championship. Jamie Edmonds is here now, and Jamie, they got to get through TCU first. Yeah, you know, I think the tendency might be to look ahead, but they have to get through the Horn Frogs first before they can look to the national championship, but the team has said all week they can't do that. It's just one game at a time. Earlier today in Arizona, Jim Harbaugh and Sonny Dykes held a joint press conference and posed with a Fiesta Bowl trophy. Any guesses how much this thing is worth? Well, it's $2.5 million. According to ESPN, the football on the top is $1 million bucks alone because of the 2,200 diamonds, and it weighs 285 pounds. Some fun really? facts there. Okay. And that isn't even the ultimate prize. Our Hobie Arteague is in Scottsdale. Much more on the coach's press conference coming up in sports. But first, Hobie caught up with some Michigan fans who made the trip. Hobie. Yeah, Jamie, you might be wondering, you know, I, I thought you were there for a football game. You're at a baseball stadium where there's a giant pep rally that will be going on in just about an hour that will be filled with maize and blue here in Scottsdale. But you talk to fans, you talk to coaches, you talk to players, everyone excited about what's to come in the Fiesta Bowl. But everyone, both internally and externally, understands that this is a business trip for the Wolverines, too, trying to get through TCU to reach that national championship game. The stadium and stage are being set as Michigan makes its way back to the national semifinal. The Fiesta Bowl crowd expected to be filled with Wolverines, ready to see their team take the next step. Kind of hard to believe, um, but I knew I knew they had it in them. I've been trusting Jim Harbaugh since the beginning. Things take time. We got strength. We got four quarters of football players that's coming out there. And we're going to take this dub. Michigan fans are confident, and so too are the wildlife. Chudy the Rhino at the Phoenix Zoo, picking the Wolverines to make their way to the national championship. It was Apple. It was Apple. It was Apple which he normally goes for the mint, I will say. So maybe we got a clear mint winner. But neither fans nor Beast can control the outcome of Saturday's contest. That's on the two teams, and Jim Harbaugh believes that his Wolverines are ready to roll as the chase for a championship rolls on. Not everybody gets this, this opportunity. I mean, hardly anybody, you know, gets this kind of opportunity. And... Um, you know, it's the best of the best, playing the best. I mean, you are who, you, who your record says you are. I think that was Bill Parcells <laughs> said that. And, you know, they're great. Um, and and we're, ready, uh, we're ready to line up. It's time to line up and, and have at it. That it is. They'll get their chance tomorrow against TCU when the two teams kick off in the afternoon. Now, I know a lot of Wolverines fans are probably hoping that Chudy is correct. And speaking of Wolverines fans, we talked to a family whose flights got canceled, but they made the trip anyway, driving almost 30 hours to be here. We'll introduce you to them. You know, the path to the college football playoff for both players, coaches, and fans 
just can't be easy. Hopefully the Wolverines can get it done. <laughs> for now, we're live in Scottsdale, Arizona. Hope you are local four. Yeah, thanks for going to the baseball stadium and the zoo because you just killed with Kim. <laughs> you should have heard my, my, my uh, thoughts about that. That's uh, pretty funny. Well, yeah. we'll have much more with Hobie and coming up in sports and on that local four plus special we have at 630. Yes, we're looking forward to it. Thank you, Jamie. We'll see you in a little bit. All right. After a legal battle that dragged on for years, today House Democrats released President Trump's tax returns. It includes nearly 6,000 pages, including 2,700 pages of individual tax returns and 3,000 pages of returns involving Trump's businesses. NBC's Drew Petro has that story tonight from Washington. Democrats say the tax returns show Trump's claims about the success of his businesses don't hold up and that IRS audits of presidents need more teeth. Republicans and Trump accused the Democrats of releasing the tax returns for political gain. The documents detail former President Trump's personal and business tax returns over six years, including while he was president. They show in some years Trump paid substantial federal taxes, while in others he paid little or nothing. Here is the most powerful man in the world, the self-described clever genius uh, who uh, brags of his wealth almost daily. And he did not pay the taxes that the most modest wage earner in this country would pay. Returns from 2020 show nearly all of Trump's income was offset by losses. He brought in more than $59 million, but lost more than $58 million, claiming a net income of under $800,000. After contributing substantially in prior years, the former president claimed no charitable deductions in 2020. The release of Trump's tax returns is part of an investigation spearheaded by Democrats on the House Ways and Means Committee, which found the IRS failed to audit Trump's finances during his presidency as required by law. There should be a mandatory audit so that the American public can have confidence in the president and the president's finances. In a recorded response to the release, Trump ripped Democrats and the media. It's so sad for our country. It's nothing but another deranged political witch hunt, which has been going on from the day I came down the escalator in Trump Tower. Meanwhile, Kevin Brady, the top Republican on the investigating committee, accused Democrats of weaponizing the release of private tax information, saying this is a regrettable stain on the Ways and Means Committee and Congress and will make American politics even more divisive and disheartening. In the long run, Democrats will come to regret it. One of the findings of the investigation is that the IRS does not have enough resources to comb through tax documents as complex as Trump's in order to comply with laws currently on the books. Democrats want to give the IRS more resources so that future presidents face more scrutiny. Reporting from Washington, I'm Drew Petromo, Local 4. Hey, Drew, thank you. Now to an update on the murders of four Idaho college students that shocked the nation over a month ago. Police arrested a suspect today in connection with that investigation. 28-year-old Brian Christopher Koberger was arrested this morning near Scranton, Pennsylvania. He's being held on fugitive from justice charges and a first degree murder warrant. We're told a judge has ordered his extradition back to Idaho. The arrest comes as a celebration of life was planned today for two of the victims. Tomorrow night, when the clock strikes midnight, the moratorium on residential water shutoffs in the city, that is going to come to an end. But the city wants everybody to know there is help to get those past due bills paid. Nick Monticelli shows people how to apply and prevent having your water shut off. There are about 60,000 customers in the city of Detroit that are behind on their water bills. Now, DWS does not want to shut off the water, but we're getting close to that point. However, they're giving you two options to figure this out and get on a plan. The first one is the Lifeline plan, which is a preset limit on water usage of 4,500 gallons for a fixed rate. Signing up for that plan takes some online navigating, though. You start with the city's website, and then on there is a link to the Wayne Metropolitan Community Action Agency. Once there, you click over here onto Programs, then scroll down to the DWSD Lifeline plan. Then click Apply which brings you to another page. If you are not registered, you'll have to do that first. Then you log in. Then once you get to this page, you can click on Let's Get Started. You'll have to agree to this statement, answer these questions, press Next, and then you can finally begin. It is the beginning of the application process, starting with your address. Once you get the address in is when the profile really begins. You have to have an ID and you have to fill out all this information. The second option is the 10 30 50 plan, where you can make a down payment of 10%, 30%, or 50% of the past due balance. 
How much depends on how many payments you're already on in the past 18 months. Then the past due balance is spread over 6 to 24 months in addition to the normal monthly bill. To apply for this one, you have to sign up using the DWSD customer portal. Once in, this one is a little quicker. Put in your address, fill in the profile information, and then click on Payment Assistance, which will guide you through that process. You can see it's a little tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. And honestly, it's something that really needs to be done before your water gets shut off. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Information there, Nick. Thank you. Well, the Mega Millions jackpot is now up to $685 million, and that has a lot of people doing a little dreaming about what all they could do with that money to kick off 2023. But where to go to get the golden ticket? How about where somebody already won? That's exactly where our Grant Herms went today to find out if that luck stuck. Our regulars are hoping that lightning strikes twice at this gas station in Dearborn. Incidentally, that's about your odds of winning the whole thing, but they swear this place is lucky and that Lady Luck, she's got a place in the back. You think this place is lucky? Oh, it is. It is. At the corner of Greenfield and Warren, regulars at this Shell gas station are buying Mega Millions tickets by the handful. The winner be wonderful. My husband thought I won the last time. He came home and I was gone, so he was like, she left me. <laughs> Lottery hopefuls looking for another payday from this store after it sold a million dollar winning ticket during November's billion dollar Powerball run. I play my lot here every day, and he's a nice guy. That nice guy is this nice guy. I feel like I, uh, I won. Hussein Sharaf is behind the counter and thinks whatever the secret to luck is, he's got it. I think I'm lucky person, you know. So I have the family, I have my kids, I have, I'm lucky. So, what to do with all that money to ring in the new year? A cash option to take home hundreds of millions could go a long way towards those charitable resolutions. If I get that money, I want to give me a couple of places for homeless, feed the homeless. You know, yeah. you know, it's a lot of people out there and get houses and get no food. And I always wanted to do that. Or maybe put that cash to goals that are a little more about making a change. I leave Michigan. Go where? Florida. Somewhere hot. No <laughs> snow. And after all, the new year is for dreaming big. And what's bigger than the jackpot? I've got my winning ticket right here. You can find out the winning numbers tonight on Local 4 at 11 o'clock. In Dearborn, Grant Herms, Local 4. All right, best of luck to everybody playing yeah, today. Love to hear all what they're going to do with everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, he's been a staple in the community for close to five decades. Why this pizza shop owner says now is the right time to hang up his apron. And they weren't just going to give up. State troopers make an adorable rescue, and Saginaw will take you inside next. She was a beautiful person who saved lives here at Sinai Grace Hospital. Then this week, she was rushed to Sinai Grace after a carjacker took her life. Not for a dog's journey. She would have gave up the, the keys, the wallet, anything. Live at 515, the family of Tracy Golden speaking out to me tonight. And there's late breaking developments in the search for that gunman.